Ahem. Is this thing on? <laughs> hey, it's Graham Breitenstein, the host of This Week with Drunk Astrology, the podcast. And you know, at the top of every new year, it can be so easy to fall into a mindset that's like, well, it's a new year. I guess I'll like do some goals. I don't know, a couple friends are doing dry January. Maybe I should do dry January. But you know what? That's not you, and that is most certainly not me. You know, we start 2024 with Mercury, the planet of our thinking mind, stationing direct. So that means the planet that rules the way our brain functions is stopped. So we experience some brain fog, a lack of clarity. We might be a little hungry for change, a little hungry to set some goals, but we're not functioning at our full potential. That's okay, because your astrologer here has created a free resource for you to clear through your mental muck. I'm calling it the Manifest Big in 2024 journal, and it is absolutely free, 0.00. Free 99. This thing is full of science backed prompts around goal setting and astrological insights because the timing of setting your goals is just as important. And that's exactly what astrology teaches us. So, to get it, you're going to go to drunkastro.com backslash amazing year. And in less than a minute, you're going to download your PDF and you're going to start getting to work. And here's what's cool. In 2024 and for the next 20 years, Pluto, the planet of power, it's the source of our power as a collective, changes into Aquarius. So that means the source of power for all of us to tap into lies in Aquarian themes. What are Aquarian themes, you might be asking? Aquarian themes are community, collaboration, and communication. You are not going to be working through this journal alone. No, 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 no. You and I are going to be working together to fill this out and to manifest our most amazing year ahead. And here's the challenge. I implore you to bring in people that you admire, people that you respect, people that you love, people that you care for, whether that's family, friends, your partners, your co-workers, your teammates. Bring them into this process. The more we share this resource, the more we are all tapping into the power that is available to us. It is no longer the solo Capricorn journey. Pluto's been there, done that since 2008. For the next 20 years, our power lies in community. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do this together. We're going to share this with the people that we love, that we respect, that we want to see win. So again, go to drunkastro.com backslash amazing year. It is also, if you scroll up, the first link in the show notes. Download that PDF in less than a minute. And you and I are going to do this together. Don't miss this opportunity to create your most amazing year You're going to thank me later, I promise. So now that you got your journal, why don't we hop into this week? It's a brand new week. It's a brand new week. Aren't we so excited? I hope you guys are excited at least to hear my little soliloquy, (laughs) my little harmony in your ear. Uh, Whether you're watching this or listening to this on a walk or on a drive with your kids, without your kids, I'm going to try to be more uh, kid friendly. Um, I've got my coffee in my hand. It is currently Sunday, the 29th of May. Um, and we're under the Mars Jupiter conjunction, which starts a whole two year cycle in your Aries. Houses with some planets, if you got some Aries planets. Um, But a two-year cycle about the direction you want to go, the risk you're willing to take to get what you want. Um, And it's fierce energy. It's fearless energy. It's bold. It's courageous. So I hope that, you know, I hope that you're, you know, making some intentional decisions about your direction and about your, um, 
your willingness to be adventurous and to be a little spontaneous. Try something new. You know, I've been having some really, really powerful readings lately where we're really just focusing in on the big cycles at hand and where they're falling in your chart and how you get this opportunity to redo them, rework the version of the version of yourself that you were the last time we were in these cycles and that is one of the most powerful things about astrology is being able to look back and say oh the first time this cycle took place i was i was 18 years younger all of us were you know as far as these eclipses go And boy, do we have to, you know, we got some fun things to talk about this week with the eclipses because the eclipses are over. The eclipses are over. Um, As of by the time you're listening to this podcast, it will be over because we have the Gemini new moon this week, which takes us out of it. But as far as this cycle goes, you've lived through, if you're old enough, you've lived through this cycle before. Go back 18, 19 years. And what was going on? And who were you then? What was what was your experience then? And now here's your opportunity to say to look back and go, all right, I'm doing it all over again, but I'm 18 years wiser now. I'm 18 years evolved now. I'm enlightened and awakened now, and in a way that I wasn't then. I didn't have this sense of security, or I didn't have this my sense of self. Um, I didn't have the love for myself um, like I do now. So if you could talk to 18 years younger you and say, this is what we should do different, then that's your opportunity right now. Your opportunity now is to talk to that version of yourself and say, hey, I've been through this, and now here's 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 how I can tell you that we can get through this in a better way or a more enlightened way, a more evolved way, um, in a way that we can actually enjoy the experiences that we're, that we're living through, whether they're good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. And sometimes they're not external events. I, wanna, I cannot reiterate this en- enough. Eclipses don't always have to be actual events where you go, oh my God, that email that changed my life, or that phone call, um, I lost that pet. I lost that family member. It's not always an actual event. I don't want you or anyone that listens to this to get married to the idea that nothing's moving for you if you're not having eclipse-like events. Okay, They're not always that. They can happen within your own being, within your own self, within your own mind, within your own heart. Keep in mind that we're on the Taurus-Scorpio axis. Taurus is that like tangible domestic home life, how we make money, what 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 do we do for work? How do we make that money? But Scorpio is one on the financial front, what do we do with that money? Where does it merge with someone else? But then also it brings up from the deep. It exposes something and sometimes that's a metaphysical exposing. Sometimes that's a um it's a relationship expose. You're learning something that's been going on behind the scenes. That is the the magic of Scorpio energy, which, you know, doesn't always feel like magic, okay? It, it can feel deep and disheartening and downtrodden because you're, it's, it's, it's bringing up something. It's pulling it from the deep, from the depth, some things that we try to bury, that we try to hide. Sometimes we're trying to hide from ourselves and we're not willing to look at the ugly parts of ourselves or the or the nasty experiences that we've gone through and then when eclipses on this axis come around they erupt and it's like a volcano that lava comes from deep within the earth and then it erupts okay so thankfully i can i am happy to report on this week's podcast that this chapter of the eclipse season is over Thanks to this Gemini new moon uh, that takes place at 4.30 in the morning, Monday, which is also Memorial Day. So if you're in the United States, happy Memorial Day. Um, As you're firing up your barbecue pits, we also want to pay respects to all those that we've lost in service. Um, And as I wrote in the newsletter, um, which should also be in your inbox if you're on the newsletter, um, if you're not. Uh, you know, click the link in the there's show notes and there's a description on YouTube. Um, but 
you know, just saying, you know, if uh, if you are in service or if a loved one of yours is in service, I pay my highest respects and cosmic send just big cosmic hugs and love to you, your family, your loved ones, um, as we pay respect to those that we've lost um, while in service. So um, that's that's one thing that gets to report this week, which is very nice and very exciting. And I'm extremely, <laughs> extremely happy myself that Eclipse season is over because it has been a wild ride. It has been... Ooh, the energy, baby. And I'm sure you feel the same. Um, and we've been in eclipses since mid-April, okay? So we've been in this for a while. It has been a six-plus-week ride, and it's the chapter two of the story. So I want you to think now, now that this chapter is over, I want you to think back to November, December of 2021. And that was the beginning. So where was your mind? Where was your heart? Were there events that took place? Because that is the, the, the nucleus, the beginning of this story that is going to take you all the way to October of 2023. Okay? So when you think about that, you go, oh, wow. So the seed was planted. The, the seed of growth, the seed of evolution, the seed of change This rupturing of some way, shape, or form, whether it was within yourself or without yourself, outside of yourself, that began November, December. So that story is now carrying with you. If you lost someone at that time, which, you know, people in my life did, um, you know, you consider that there is divine intervention, there is divine overseeing happening in your story as this evolves as you evolve as you change you now have like a a cosmic guardian that's overseeing you all the way through and overseeing all these chapters as you work with that story as you work with the pain as you work with sorrow as you work with grief if that's part of your story you have this you have this invisible guardian now and Scorpio energy as well, is the realm of things felt but not seen. It's not the tangible, right? It's the intangible. It's the invisible. It's it's buried, you know, it's ruled by Scorpio, which is the guardian of the underworld. It's Hades energy, right? So I just want you to keep that in mind as you go through. Now that we've accomplished two chapters of this story on this axis Now I want you to ask yourself, how have I evolved since November, December? How have I changed? How have my circumstances changed? And now you have another six months of growth and evolution now that chapter two is done. And then when we get to the fall, when we get to October, November, you're going to have chapter three because then we're going to have a Scorpio solar eclipse and a Taurus lunar eclipse. All right. So, you know, six months of growth and evolution and change. Um, from now until the next chapter. And now I want you to ask yourself if you've identified your story or the themes of your story. Now, don't get married to the same players because the same players aren't always involved in your story, but it's the theme that is working. If you've identified your theme, now I want you to ask yourself, you have a benchmark. You have October, November, right? So by October, what do you want to see evolve and change for yourself? So that by the time you get to the next set of eclipses, you're riding high, you're riding fast, you're going, you're, you're, you're in charge of it, right? And then, so you press the, you press the accelerator now, and for the next six, next six months, and then when eclipses come, if you, if you take your, your astrologer's advice on this here podcast, when eclipses come, you back off. You go, okay, I am trusting that everything that I have put forth, not only since November, December of 2021, but since now, since May 30th, since mid-April to May, I trust and have faith that everything that I have put in is going to come back and it is working for me, not against me. And then you let eclipses do what they do. Okay, that's why I say it's a great time. Eclipses are great times to take a spiritual sabbatical. No manifestation, no no setting of intentions. The skies are too volatile. And throw in there 
that on this great eclipse season, we had a Mercury retrograde smack dab in the middle. That is, it's just too wild. It's too frenetic. It's too signal scrambling. It was too much going on at once. So now I am here to give you your cosmic permission slip. You can now... You can start your manifesting, rev up your manifesting engines, because now under this Gemini new moon, today, May 30th, at 4.30 a.m., at 9 degrees and 3 minutes of Gemini. So if you have your birth chart, and if you've worked with me, um, if I haven't sent it to you and you and you need a way to see it, you just send me a, a message, send me an email, and I'm going and I will send you your chart. Because everyone that I've worked with, I have your charts, and I have no problem sending you um, your chart. Um, But you find nine degrees of Gemini in your chart, houses and planets, and go, okay, that's the house, or these are the houses that I that I get to manifest in. You know, first house, you yourself, and you, your image, how you look, how you. how the outside world perceives you. Second house, work and money. Third house, your friends, who you work with, social media, um, collaborating. Um, fourth house, family, home, foundation, financial security. Fifth house, creativity, romance, love, uh, children um, or other people's kids. Uh, sixth house, daily work, organization, getting, 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 uh, getting your day-to-day in line, self-care, self-love. Seventh house, relationships. Eighth house, deep personal uh, relationships and finances, investments, um, opportunities. Ninth house, travel. Um, Your big picture, taking risk, entrepreneurship, taking a course, teaching a course. Tenth house, career, success, ambition, being recognized. How do you want uh, your professional trajectory to go? Eleventh house, friends, groups, colleagues, uh, communities, collaborators. Um, in 12th house, creativity, endings, closure, um, spirituality, um, also a great uh, house for self-care, self-love, meditation. So depending on what house you're having this new moon in, that's your sweet sauce for manifestation. And you are now welcome to get back, <laughs> throw open your manifesting journals, get your altars together, get your crystals together. In two weeks' time, we'll have that beautiful full moon in Sagittarius. You can wash all your crystals in the full moon um, because now eclipses are over. And now the other thing to point out this week, we have a lot of things to point out, but Mercury Retrograde Celebrate is officially over this week as of Friday, June 3rd. So we have the signal scrambling energy of Mercury finally stopping and going forward again. So now this week he stopped though. So now when Mercury is stopped, this is not the time to put pen to paper. It's not a time to make permanent-like decisions, okay? So, uh, or if you do, you just know that some element of this agreement, of this deal, of this contract is going to change, okay? So you got to keep that in mind that this week is not the week to ink something with permanent-like intentions, all right, and if you do, you're just conscious of the fact that somehow, some way, shape, or form, this contract is going to change. This agreement can shift in some way, shape, or form, or it's just really annoying. I had an old friend that signed a, a lease, um, a car lease, uh, not a car lease, an apartment lease uh, during a retrograde, and it was like three days before Mercury was stationing to go forward again. And I said, "Listen, you should do this in like five days." You know, put it off and just do it in five days. Didn't listen to me. And what ended up happening? The apartment, the landlord gave him all the wrong paperwork. (laughs) And this is someone who travels a lot. So gave him all the wrong paperwork. And he had already like moved his stuff in, but wasn't like still living out of boxes or whatever. Wasn't even there because he was out of town. And they said, listen, we gave you all the wrong paperwork, and this is before like DocuSign. This was we're talking like early two thousands. This is before all of that, and they said so. You technically don't live in that apartment, and we need you to sign this paperwork like now. Otherwise, if you don't in this span of time, you're gonna have to. You know, we're gonna kick you out. And so <laughs> he had to leave. I think it was New York. Leave New York to fly back to L.A. just to sign that lease all over again. And if he had 
heeded his friend's advice. (laughs) He wouldn't have had to go through any of that because they probably would have noticed that it was the wrong paperwork if he had pushed it off for about five days and just let Mercury station and then get two days away from that station, which is why I said five days. So it's just, it can do stuff like that. It can be hyper annoying um, if you end up this week just doing something, signing something, or making some sort of agreement. Um, there can be some frustration involved, annoyances involved, um, and just cross wires, you know, not necessarily miscommunication, but missed communication. Okay, and then also why this week is very potent and why you don't want to make any major moves this week, Saturn stations retrograde. And that happens on Saturday, so the day after Mercury stations. But the thing with Saturn, because he's one of our big outer planets, we got to cushion him five days before and five days after. That means that as of today, Monday, May 30th, we are already in orb of that Saturn station. So all this week... We are feeling that slow stop, that break of Saturn going, whoa. And now what he's going to do with this retrograde is everything that you've been putting in, every brick you've been laying, all the foundation that you've been creating, the new sense of structure in your life since February 23rd, That's when Saturn entered his retrograde shadow. Everything that you've been doing and putting in in work for since then is now up for review. He is going to say, okay, I like your discipline. I like your diligence. I like your responsibility as long as you've been doing, putting in good work. He's going to like those things and he's going to go, before we go any further, Let's make sure there's no cracks in the foundation. Let's make sure there is no there's no confusion about what direction you're building towards. So again, if you have your chart, you're going to look at 25 degrees of Aquarius, and that's where Saturn is going. Let's take a second. Let's pause. And now do you hear that Monday we start feeling Saturn station? Mercury station's Friday, but we start feeling him big time on Wednesday, June 1st. Happy June, by the way. And that carries, Mercury carries us through the weekend, but Saturn carries us all the way to Wednesday of next week. So we've got a, you know, we've got this wait energy. All this week long, it is just a wait. Hold on. Let's like really do our RE work This week, you know, let's revise your back end. This is what I'm, I'll tell you what I'm going to be doing all week. And I've, and I've planned it this way because I knew that this was going to be the perfect time to do this. If you've got back end work, like the back end of my website, the back end of my reading structures, that's now this week, that is my primary focus. I'm working on all the back end things. How, what's the layout of my website? On all my entertainment stuff, that's really what I'm going to be focusing on too. I've got the Drunk Astrology website, and there's going to be structural changes that I'm going to be implementing and making, which I've been, you know, prefacing that with you for the last few weeks. Um, And then on the entertainment side, my entertainment website is like getting completely redoing makeover. There's pitch decks that I'm creating and building. This is the week to build behind the scenes. And to not, this isn't the time to put it out. This isn't the time to say like, yep, this is it. Like I am, I've got it fully fledged and it's in perfect condition and now I'm going to send it out into the world. Not that week. Perfect. Change. Edit. All of this stuff. Do all your, the the stuff that we don't always necessarily like to do. Some some personality types really like it. Um, I really do like it to an extent. I like being with the people. And now the Gemini New Moon, though, is going to encourage and going to give us that whoosh of optimism when it comes to our friends and our networks and our communities close to home, our siblings, brothers, cousins. It's a great time. And for Memorial Day, it's a great time to just gather with your friends and gather with your close people. Um, But what it does do, because it's landing in the middle of this stop, wait energy of Saturn and Mercury, this is how I'm 
I, this is how I'm interpreting it. Now that eclipses have shaken you up and have ruptured something and, and pushed you in some way, shape, or form, and Mercury's had you reflecting and doing all your RE words, revisiting and revising and reuniting, Gemini New Moon now comes and says, now that you've gone through all of this, who do you want to go, who do you want to come with you on this next part of your of your journey, of your chapter? This next chapter is a very important chapter. And now the Gemini New Moon says, who's coming with you? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, I want to get in your ear real quick. There are a lot of spiritual viewpoints and perspectives that you can subscribe to. You know, there's astrology, numerology, feng shui, there's Akashic records, there's past life regressions, there's destiny cards. There is just any number of ways that you can tap into the universe to get insight, to help you create the life you want to live, to create abundance and prosperity for love and relationships, connection, all those things. And I recognize that there is a lot and that at times it can be overwhelming and it can be hard to figure out who to go to, who can I listen to, who can I trust. So this is why I created the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series. If you're not already listening to it, it's available wherever you're listening to this podcast already, but you can also watch it each interview on drunkastro.com. There's a whole page there for it. And I've linked the series in the show notes. So in this series, one, I want you to I want you to know all the d- different tools that you can use to manifest big this year because the life that you want, the life that you deserve, it is waiting for you and there are a number of methods to consider, spiritual and non-spiritual. Okay, I'm in this series, I'm not only talking to Tali from the Astro Twins, not only talking to Christina Hollinger, a feng shui expert, about how to feng shui your living space, your workspace, to create a space that is high vibration and that attracts the life you want to live. I'm not only talking to a crystal expert about what crystals are good for the energy of 2024's unique energy. Not only talking to a symbologist, a destiny card reader. Have you ever heard of that? Because I hadn't heard of that until I met um, CJ, who is the destiny card reader I bring into this um, series. Um, I'm not only talking to spiritual folks. I'm talking to an intimacy expert because love and relationships are at the top of a lot of our lists, single or not single. We can all learn how to be more intimate with each other, be more authentically expressing ourselves. I'm also talking to Elise Joan, a beach body super trainer and longevity expert, because it's not about just creating an amazing life. It's about living a long life, one that you love, one that you want to be healthy for, one that you want to actually stay in for the long haul. So this series is set up to to get you in alignment from all different angles. So if you haven't already, go catch up on the episodes that have already aired. And the new episodes that are coming, every single Wednesday, a new episode will drop until the series is finished. So go back, drunkastro.com. There's a whole page for how to manifest big in 2024. All the videos are there. Watch the interviews. There's a link to this in the show notes. It'll get you right where you need to be. Okay? We're doing this this year. You're doing this this year. Your your, um, Manifest Big in 2024 journal, that is the foundation of what you're going to use this year to set goals that you're actually going to achieve. Now, all these other tools in the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series, these are all going to enhance your vibe. Enhance the vibe of your living space, your heart set, your mindset, your body set. You are going to be, there's no way by using the Manifest Big in 2024 journal, by tapping into the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series, this is all you need. 
it's all you need. Okay? So in case you haven't got into it, this was just a little reminder. needed to get that in your ear. Let's get back to this episode and keep up this vibration. So that's a question I would like you to answer this week. Who do you want to come with you? And who is appropriate and not appropriate might show themselves this week and next week while we're under this new moon energy. But what it also does is it teaches you the magic of words, the magic of communication, the magic of how you connect with your family, connect with your friends, connect with your loved ones. Our words have weight. And that is something I want you to take I want you to recognize starting today and for the next two weeks, the magic of words, the magic of messages. Um, how, how do you write? How do you speak um, in person, face to face? How do you speak on social media? What's in your captions? What's in your bio? Just consider how your words could affect someone else and, you know, speak with intention for the next two weeks. And just see how your words are received, but also the beauty of the lesson of Gemini is that we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. So not only pay attention to the words you speak, but also extra, pay extra, extra attention to the words that are spoken to you, that are sent to you, whether it's a text, whether it's a DM, whether it's a comment on a post or on a story. How do you connect and how do others speak to you? How and, and and that is where you find out who is coming and who is not, right? If you don't like the way someone's speaking to you or speaking about you with their baby, they get the whoop, they get the whoop, they get that swipe out of here. No. And then those that, that speak to us and uplift us and support us with their words, then that's where it's at. That's that magic sauce. Now, actions, let me say that. Actions are have to back up the words, right? But the, the way that people speak to us, the way that people um, use their words, whether it's intentional or just kind of half, half-assed, you know, then we're, you're going you're gonna to see. I just want you to pay attention to, to, to words, okay? That's it. Um, Okay, let's do the moons because we've uh, covered a lot of information. So we're going to cover the moons, and then I'm going to give you some dates, and we're going to get you on your very way. So today, Monday, May 30th, the moon is in Gemini, has a sextile to Chiron um, at 5.19 p.m., and of course, the big energy is the new moon at 4.30 a.m. again, 9 degrees, 3 minutes of Gemini. Tuesday, May 31st, Gemini Moon has a square to Neptune, so clarifying words or a, a situation where like there needs to be, like let can we decide what this is? Um, but the Gemini Moon goes void at 1:10 p.m. with a trine to Saturn, so that is great. That makes the energy of that new moon substantial and structural and foundational. So yes, 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 we love the energy of this new moon. At 10.49 p.m., now all the times I give you are Pacific Standard Time, so make sure you adjust for your time zones. At 10.49 p.m., the moon enters Cancer. It is in Cancer Wednesday, June 1st. Don't forget to pay your rent or your mortgage. Uh, And that moon, let's see, has a square to Jupiter. That's a little overdoing. It can be a little much. It can be a little emotionally, just a lot. It also has a square to Mars. That's, That's an overdoing. Um, it does have a nice sextile to Venus at 8.24 in the morning, so that's that's a nice that's nice because Venus is in Taurus, her happy place now. So she's just you know she's just bringing the balance, bringing the harmony. Um, and she might be a little a little stubborn on a bad day, but that sextile to with the Cancer Moon, wow, that's real, that's great. Uh, cancer. Moon's in Cancer all day June 2nd. Thursday has a square to Chiron, so a little wounding there. A little, you know, when the moon's in Cancer, the moon's in its happy place, but it's um, it's emotionally volatile. So a square to Chiron can kind of uptick a wound, so we got to watch for that. Um, and then on Friday, June 3rd, the Cancer moon goes void at 8.15 a.m. with an opposition to Pluto. So now... Monday, Tuesday, great moons with that Gemini trine Saturn. Now, Wednesday, Thursday... Friday until 8.15 a.m., separative, argumentative, 
Also something where something might come out, something, um, you know, you can drop something. You can, you can deliberately, if this, is a, if this is a week where, whether it's at work or whether it's in your own business, in your own life, something needs to be put out, then that's something that that opposition to Pluto can do. It doesn't always have to be this, like, tug of war, this emotional tug of war. Um, it shows up that way a lot. But it is also, as how I've noticed it, it's also something where it's like, oh, I'm going to send my resume in or I'm going to take something that I've been, you know, Pluto that I've had for a long time or that I've been working with a long time and now I'm going to put it out. I'm going to send it out. Just keep in mind that the, the, the reply or the response or something, if you are putting something out under Wednesday, Thursday, early Friday morning, it might just take a while, and you might have to follow up and say, hey, did you receive what I sent you? Did you receive what I – you just might have to follow up once Mercury is a little bit further out of that retrograde um, station. At 11.38 a.m. on Friday, June 3rd, the moon enters Leo, has a wonderful, expansive, juicy, collaborative uh, trine with Jupiter at 8.09 p.m. That is lovely. The Leo moon on Saturday the 4th has a trine to Mars, a square to Venus, sextile to the sun, a trine Chiron, square Uranus. You hear all those aspects on Saturday. Really, the busy days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. This weekend is really, really busy because the moon's really busy. We got the Mercury, Saturn station. It's a lot going on. Then on Sunday, uh, the Leo moon goes void at 4.12 p.m. with a square to Mercury. So watch those words. My, people might be really, really... Um, a bit more aggressive and a bit more selfish over the weekend. Um, and that square to Mercury is like spiteful words. Um, so, you know, Mercury's in Taurus. He's stationed. He's stopped. So, you know, that Leo Moon is going to be like, I want what I want. And Mercury's like, I don't really care what you want. <laughs> so you're going to watch for that energy over the weekend. And just keep in mind that this weekend is more of like the less, less is more this weekend. I'll just say less is more. Um, and then at 11.22 p.m., the moon enters Virgo, which carries us all the way into next week, and we will cover that um, next week, of course. So now, the, just as far as um, this, the planets go, um, I just want to give you some Mercury retrograde dates so you can kind of track your story, because now Chapter 3 is the post-retrograde shadow. So Mercury first entered his shadow on April 27th through May 9th. So that was chapter one. That was like the preview of what the meat of the story was going to be about. So go back to April 27th to May 9th and say, oh, okay, look back and say, how were the events taking place then? Or how was, you know, my mindset, my heart set? Um, what was I thinking about in that time frame? Because that set you up for the climax, which is the actual retrograde. So then from May 10th to June 3rd, the meat of the movie, the meat of that retrograde story, you know, people coming from the past, you're reconnecting, you're reuniting, you're revisiting ideas and thought patterns, and, uh, you know, just doing all your, all your fancy RE words. So that was that section. And now, June 3rd to June 19th is that chapter three of the story. So now for chapter three, you get to say, okay, now this is cleanup time. I love calling post-retrograde when it comes to Mercury the post-cleanup time, cosmic cleanup. Um, and so you're going to, you know, you're going to fine-tune and fine-edit and, and just kind of put that nice little ribbon around the whole story and go, now I'm taking off. But that's for the 16 days, June 3rd to June 19th. So you have that period of time to just do your cleanup. And kind of see how the chapters one and two carry through chapter three in a in a new way, or you pick back up where you left off. Um, that's really what that energy is doing. Um, and then you have Saturn retrograde at two forty seven p.m. Saturday the fourth, um, which takes us back to February third. February 23rd, when he entered his retrograde shadow. Now everything that you've been doing since then is up for review and structural review, and serious review. It's that astro dad, that cosmic curmudgeon um, energy. And then this retrograde goes all the way to October 22nd, and then he will be in his cosmic cleanup time, his post-retrograde shadow, from October 22nd to January 27th of 2023. So that's going to keep us 
it's gonna keep us um, it's gonna keep us busy. Um, but yeah, just just go back to end of February and say, okay, what was I? What did I begin? And what have I been doing since then? Now I'm gonna review it, and now you know you're gonna you might be become aware of what needs to be redone or reviewed or revisited this week. And that's why I'm saying to take to take control of this energy in some in some way. You know, do your back end work. You know, get get your get your foundation together, or just kind of look at where you're at, take stock of where you're at, and all the facets of your life that are important to you, and go, okay, how could this be better? How could I make this better? And how can I dedicate time this week to making things better? Okay, that's it. You're done. You've got your weekly weather. You've got your podcast. You can revisit this all you want. Oh, let me just say, if you've made it this far, Facebook podcast goes away Friday, June 3rd. Done. Kaputs. Facebook said, didn't work. We're over. We're done with it. So if you are someone who watches this podcast or listens to this podcast on Facebook, I encourage you to make your move ASAP, whether it's Apple, Spotify, Google, or just go subscribe on YouTube. Because as of Friday, this is not going to exist anymore on Facebook. So it's already been taken off the Drunk Astro website. Um, so I just just telling you now because and I'm and if I remember, I'm going to give you a reminder next week. But um, if you're listening to Facebook, you actually won't uh, won't see that next week. So you better make your move. <laughs> okay, that's it. I'm done. Have a wonderful week. I will catch you on social media all week long. And always, if you're not on the newsletter. Go to the show notes, um, and whether you're on a podcast platform or if you're on YouTube. It's in the description, but get, get yourself on the newsletter for weekly horoscopes, monthly horoscopes, and sometimes, if you're lucky, new and full moon reports. So that's it. Okay, have a great one. See you soon. Hey, one last thing before we go. Who are three people you could share this episode with? Who would benefit from learning astrology in real time? From learning how to work with the energy of the cosmos, from tracking the patterns and cycles, to seeing it in real time, in motion. Can you text them right now? Can you send that message and just say, I'm going to share this show with you because I think that you would really vibe with learning in this way. I would appreciate it. They would appreciate it. And you'll feel good knowing that you're spreading the love. Let's keep that high vibration going. I'll see you next week. Bye.